Hey, shalom, 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 shalom to everyone watching. Shalom, shalom, shalom to everyone watching here on my break. And today I take advantage of the time and uh, make sure we get in some learning, some studying. So we're going to get right into our series of Sefer Karim, book number two, chapter 16, Laughter. <laughs> uh, so we have the idea of laughter coming in with Rabbi Albo and what he terms as something that is applicable to the Creator. So let's get right into it. Laughter, according to Rabbi Albo, uh, is Hebrew for sehok. It's, it's, it's a homon- it's a homonous term, and it applies to joy as the expression. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. Here, laugh means was glad, as is also the interpretation of ankalos. Laughter may also denote scorn as an expression. For example, I am as one that is laughing stock to his neighbor. And sometimes laughter and scorn are combined, and the words are used synonymously as an expression. He that sitteth in heaven laugheth. The Lord has them in derision, for laughter is often due to the feeling of contempt for that which deserves it as when a person observes a defect in the words or deeds of another, while being conscientious of superiority in himself, as not likely to earn word or deed as his neighbor has done. Thus laughter arises from the feeling of contempt when he observes his neighbor doing or saying something that is unbecoming to human nature or a person's dignity. In the same way, Laughter and derision are ascribed to God in expression. He that sitteth in heaven laugheth. The Lord has, has them in derision. The reason is because he hears them saying, Let us break their bands asunder. Words a human being should not use, as our rabbis say. The reason that the Psalms of Absalom stands next to dealing with Gog and Magog is that if anyone should say, it is possible that a servant should rebel against his master. You say to him, Is it possible that a son should rebel, rebel against his father? And yet the latter actually happened, so the former will happen. It is clear from this that it is an unusual thing for a man to say, and that he who says it deserves derision and contempt. In such cases, then, laughter is attributed to God or to man. Sometimes a person laughs when he deceives another in a matter about which the latter should have taken caution and did not. Accordingly, the cause of laughter in all cases is a feeling of superiority in the person laughing. When he sees another commits a folly or exhibits ignorance or foolishness. When the scientist says that laughter is a human property, an example, the cause of laughter... The cause of laughter is not known. They mean to say that we do not know why laughter is accompanied by certain bodily motions, or why laughter is caused by touching the armpit or feeling other sensitive places in the body. But derision as a cause of laughter is well known, as we have shown in explaining the verse, He that sitteth in heaven laugheth, meaning there is a, a sense of derision or mockery that's taking place and when it has to do with cutting cutting asunder the bonds, it's referring to people who basically have gone through conversion and then at a later time say they want nothing to do with the Jewish life. <laughs> and this is why it's almost like comical that after so much years wanting to become part of the people, they all of a sudden throw off their yoke and say, we don't want to be part of the people anymore because it's too tough, it's too hard, too much obligations, whatever you, you can imagine. And this is the reason why the laughter that we read in the Psalms. So laughter is also connected to, as it were, an attribute that's imputed upon God. And it is connected to joy, happiness. So now in the next chapter, we're going to look at place, makum, a place, a term which uh, things surround the body and bounds and incorporal things. And we're going to take a look at that because it's important to understand this aspect of makum, where Hashem's presence is in the place, in the makum. And we're going to realize that although God's presence is everywhere, His existence is everywhere, 
that doesn't make a particular aspect God. Just like it doesn't make a body God. And this is where we distinguish it between God and God's creation. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero. I hope you enjoyed. Share this video and be part of the ways of Israel. Shalom, shalom.